Здравствуйте! Я, комиссар Бенков, представлям вам. I, комиссар Бенков, present you. Attack on Aegis. Aegis integrates sensors, weapons and decoys, providing command and enabling quick reaction. By far the most numerous ship class with Aegis is US Navy's Berg destroyer. The system can detect and deal with underwater or surface threats, but the most famous aspect of Aegis are its anti-air capabilities. If enemy is not emitting with own radars, Aegis's SPY-1 radar would try to discover the enemy on its own. The radar has four arrays, so two of them can always be used against targets coming from one direction. The arrays detect both air and surface contacts while tracking incoming missiles. So what would happen if a single Berg destroyer would come under air attack? It could try engaging enemy planes with missiles from afar if enemy is flying high over radar horizon. More commonly, enemy planes would fly low even while they are still far out. Of course, attack wouldn't be possible if enemy didn't have prior information of where the naval fleet is. That can't be stressed enough as one of the hardest things to achieve in naval warfare. Enemy planes would turn on their radars and pop up over horizon, so they precisely locate the Berg. A short peak would not be enough for Aegis to endanger them. Anti-ship missiles would be fired. They would fly under the horizon, change their approach path and close in a known location of the ship. They too may peek over horizon to correct their course. Missiles would breach the radar horizon at around 25 kilometers away from the destroyer. If the missiles are all coming from a single direction, the ship would turn its side towards the attacker. It has more radar arrays facing the incoming missiles that way, as well as more weapons available. Several seconds later, the targets would be classified and evolved Sea Sparrow missiles fired. Supersonic attack missiles would be programmed to perform random defensive maneuvers, making their path longer, but reducing the chance of being hit. Historical statistics suggest that even when Interceptor had a technology lead against a non-maneuvering target, kill rate was around 50%. Aegis should expect to use at least two, but possibly three or more Interceptor missiles to bring down each attacker. With mechanical arm launchers, previous Aegis ships had firing rate bottleneck. Vertical launch system removed that bottleneck. Fired ESSM missiles would rely on SPY-1 radar for course corrections, but the radar isn't precise enough for final interception. For precise guidance, Berk uses three small radars which illuminate the targets. The large radar hands off guidance and usually 3 to 5 seconds of precision guidance is needed for missiles to follow the illuminated target and attempt interception. Single illuminated spot can usually be followed by two different interceptor missiles. With three illuminators, Berg can attempt to intercept three different targets within seconds. Several seconds later, it can attempt interception of three more targets if additional evolved Sea Sparrow missiles have been launched. Another bottleneck is number of guidance channels. Radars of similar tech level usually guide 8 to 12 interceptor missiles. Two Aegis arrays should thus guide up to 24 interceptors at the same time. But some attackers would be hit and guidance channels would periodically be freed up for newly launched interceptors. Aegis would detect contacts crossing the horizon some 36 seconds before they strike the ship. Firing solution would come several seconds later and first volley of interceptor missiles would be fired. Every several seconds another volley would follow. First interception would happen at around 12 kilometers away from the ship. There would be time for a total of 5 or so volleys and a total of 30 or so ESSM interceptors. They might down a total of 10 to 15 attacker missiles. But Berg Destroyer has additional defense systems. Most ships have two phalanx guns with their own radars. The main gun would also be used. Combined, they could intercept additional 3 or so attackers. Overall, some 13 to 18 missiles may be intercepted in time, not counting malfunctions and Berg's decoys. Floating decoys and chaff in the air would try to lure some missiles into the sea and obscure the view to the destroyer. 
Burke would also use hovering decoys, emitting signals and trying to make attackers think there is another target available. Generally, the more advanced the seeker within the attacking missile is, compared to the tech level of the decoy, the less efficient the decoy is. Having all of the attacking missiles crossing the horizon at the same moment is very hard to do, even if missiles coordinate their approach. They would approach the ship using a skating fashion, giving Aegis a few more seconds. That and the decoys would mean a total of 15 to 25 modern supersonic missiles should be interceptable before the first one hits the ship. Of course, in the real world, many additional variables would come into play to help both sides. Missiles may be detected later due to their stealth features. Decoys and jamming may prove less or more efficient. Attacking missiles may use different trajectories. Not to mention multiple platforms defending each other as well as multiple platforms attacking them. But as this simplified scenario shows, attacking an Aegis ship from the air requires a lot of missiles. But every ship can be sunk.